Welcome to week 11 and video one. We're going to talk about network motifs and closed walks. In particular, we're going to talk about or recall the definition of a network motif. We're going to define a closed walk and we're going to see how the adjacency matrix can help us calculate the number of closed walks in a network. We can think of a motif as a subgraph of a network. In particular, we can think of it as a small reoccurring or commonly occurring subgraph in a network. The reason that we think of a motif as a commonly occurring subgraph is because in most applications, especially in biological applications, these small reoccurring subgraphs have a functional um, property assigned with them. Now, we're saying it's a subgraph, but we're not saying it's an induced subgraph. So that is different. In particular, when we worked with graphlets, it was necessary that we considered a graphlet to be an induced subgraph. Whereas for a motif, it is not an induced subgraph. So that's one of the major differences in a motif in a graphlet. So just to make sure that we're all clear on the difference of a subgraph versus an induced subgraph, we can look at the small graph below and say that it has a cycle of length 4 as a subgraph. And it's easy to see a cycle of length 4 as a subgraph. However, with graphlets, we would have said it does not have a graphlet or it does not have an induced cycle of length 4 because we have to take all four vertices to get our cycle of length 4 and two of those four also induce a diagonal which is not part of a cycle. So the induced subgraph would not be a cycle but the cycle of length 4 is contained or is a subgraph. So here's another example. If we look at the vertices that are labeled 3, 4, 5, and 6, we see that we have an induced cycle of length 4. That is the only cycle I think you can find that is induced by four vertices in this graph. But would it also be true to say that this graph only has one cycle of length 4. If you don't specify induced, then it's assumed we're not talking about induced. And so there are many cycles of length 4 contained in this graph. So if we were to list the cycles of length 4, we would find many others besides the 3, 4, 5, and 6. There's 1, 2, 5, 4, there's one, two, four, three, and what would be another one there? One, two, three, four, and five, and so forth. So it does contain various cycles of length four, but it only contains one induced cycle of length four. Now our next topic is going to be closed walks. So you might ask, why are we changing from uh, network motifs, which we can think of as a small subgraph, to closed walks. Well, in biological networks, these motifs are often closely related to the closed walks in the network. And so in particular, a quote from El a paper by Ernesto Estrada and Juan Rodriguez Velasquez notes that in technological and biological networks, small subgraphs that capture specific patterns, which are the network motifs, are directly related to the subgraphs of the network. So now we're going to talk about closed walks. A walk 
before we even talk about a closed walk, what is a walk on a graph? A walk is a traversal. You start at a vertex and you traverse an edge to go to the next vertex of your choice. So I could walk from vertex one to vertex two, from vertex two to vertex five. I could not walk from five to three because there is no edge from five to three. But I could go back the direction I came so I could walk from one to two, two to five, five back to two, and two back to one. So unlike a path, in a path we specify that you cannot repeat vertices, so you can't backtrack. But a walk, as they're sometimes called random walks, if it's generated by random choices of your vertices, but a walk is simply a traversal of the graph with no restrictions on repetition. And it is these walks that are closely related to naturally occurring motifs, especially if our network is a directed network. So how many closed walks from the node one can you find? Now, what is a closed walk? A closed walk is a walk where the beginning vertex and the end vertex is the same. So if we're talking about a closed walk from vertex one, that means we start at one and we end at one. So we could go from one to two and back to one. We could go from one to two to three to two and back to one. If we just go from one to two to three, that's an open walk. So we have to return to the vertex where we started for it to be a closed walk. We could go down and go to one to four to six, back to four and back to one. Now the walk from one to four to six to four to one is a walk of what length? We count the edges that we traverse in order to determine the length. So one to four, there's one, four to six, two, six to four, three. So even though it's the same edge from four to six, and then six back to four, we count that twice because we traversed it twice. So we have one, two, three, and then back to one, four. So that is why it is a closed walk of length four. Every edge traversal adds to the count. So how many closed walks of length three from the node two can we find? So if we're starting and ending at two, because it's closed, we could go from two to three and three back to two. So that's a closed walk of length two. If we want a closed walk of length three, maybe we can go in the other direction. So if we go from two to one, if we go back to two, that's only length two. So if we go from two to one and then one to four, now we have traversed two edges, so we only have one left if we want one of length three. But there is no way to go from four to two along a single edge. So that's why we're saying there is no walk, no closed walk of length three from the vertex labeled two. If we go from two to one to four to one to two, like in our previous example, that is a closed walk of length four. So we may be interested in counting the number of closed walks in a network because this tells us something about the topology of the network. It would be certainly tedious, even if we wrote a program to do that, to taking all pairs and all possible walks would be extremely time consuming. Fortunately, there is a nice computational way to count the number of walks in a network, including the closed walks. So let's take a real small example. Notice that we have a path of length two with the three vertices labeled one, two, and three. We have the adjacency matrix given below of this path of length three. We have three vertices, so we have a three by three matrix, and we have a one in the eighth row, jth column, if vertex i is adjacent to vertex j. So clearly vertex one is only adjacent to vertex two, so we have a one in row one, column two. 
Now, what is A squared? If A is the adjacency matrix, A squared is simply a, the matrix multiplication, A times A. And A cubed is A times A times A. So it's matrix multiplication that we're talking about um, when it's applied to the adjacency matrix. Now, what happens is you can think of adjacency as a walk of length one. So that's pretty cool because that means a walk of length two is a type of adjacency. So we'll say that vertex i is two adjacent to vertex j if there is a walk of length two from i to j. And that is actually what the powers of the adjacency matrix give us. So for example, if we look at the adjacency matrix raised to the third power, what the entries tell us in the i row jth column is the number of walks of length three because we're looking at the third power. So we have a two in the first row, second column. That means if we look at vertex one and vertex two, that there should be two walks from vertex one to vertex two of length three, because we're in A cubed. So look at vertex one so let's see if we can find those two walks of length 3 from 1 to 2. So we can go 1, 2, 3, and get the first one. So 1, 2, 3, and back to 2 would be a walk of length 3. Now what would be the other one? Well, recall we can repeat vertices, so we could go 1, 2, and 3. So that is what we have a 2 right there. Also, look down the diagonal. The diagonals are all zeros in the third power. So that means there are no closed walks of length three. Because a closed walk, recall, your beginning and end vertex have to be the same, which means you're on the diagonal one, one, two, two, and three, three. And since those are all zeros, there are no closed walks of length three in this little graph. So if we tried to go from 1 to 2 and back, that would be of length 2. And if we went from 1 to 2 to 3 and back, that would be of length 4. So like we saw before. So rather than trying all possible pairs, we simply take powers of the adjacency matrix, which will count for us the number of walks of any given length. We just go to the appropriate power. So as another example, here's a little bit larger graph. It has eight vertices, so the adjacency matrix is an eight by eight. Notice that vertex four is degree three. So if we look at the fourth row, we see three ones. So that's a property of adjacency matrix. We might pull up again that the sum of each row corresponds to the degree of that vertex because you're just counting the adjacencies in each row. Now, there is no closed walk of length 3 from node 1. Do you agree? It's the same reason as because that's actually a subgraph of what we just looked at. So that means in this matrix as well, when we find the third power of the adjacency matrix, that we will have a 0 on the diagonal position for 1, 1. This generalizes for each k. So if I want to know the walks in the network that are a length k, then I find the kth power of the adjacency matrix. If I'm interested in the closed walks, I only have to look down the diagonal of the powers of the adjacency matrix to see how many closed walks are in the network. Now, one application of the adjacency matrix that we see a lot is the graph spectrum. You can either use the adjacency matrix or you can use the Laplacian matrix, which is defined in terms of the adjacency matrix and its degree matrix. And whether you use either matrix, 
The eigenvalues associated with that matrix are, is called the spectrum of the graph. And so mu sub k, what is given here, denotes the average spectral density. And notice that it can be found using powers of the adjacency matrix. So the average spectral density sub for each k is defined as the kth powers of the eigenvalues, but it's interesting that it's also the trace of the corresponding power of the adjacency matrix. Where the trace, now what is the trace? That's the diagonal. It is the sum of the diagonal entries. So the average would imply that we would find the trace and divide by the total number of vertices. So again, looking at this adjacency matrix is 8 by 8. For each k, we can find the corresponding power of the adjacency matrix, sum along the diagonal, and divide by n. And that will give us the average spectral density for k, mu sub k. And so in this video, we've discussed what it means for a network motif and how it differs from a graphlet, and that a network motif does not have to be induced. We've defined what we mean by a walk, and in particular, a closed walk. And we've seen how powers of the adjacency matrix can help us compute the number of closed walks in our network. Next time, we're going to look at Cytoscape and see how we can visualize networks using a really nice piece of software.